In this video, we will continue with inverse functions. You will find this on page 110 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. Finding the domain and range of a function making use of the inverse. Not of a graph, but just the inverse. So just by having the equation. The domain of a function is equal to the range of its inverse function because the x and the y values swap. The range of a function is equal to the domain of its inverse function. So basically, if this is my function, and this is the inverse of f, so if I look at this, I will say the domain is from 0 to 9. But in this case, the range is from 0 to 9. In this, the range will be from 1 to 4. But in this case, the domain will be 1 to 4. And there I just indicated with a graph. Okay, so the range of the inverse function is equal to the restricted domain of the original function. So it's restricted because it was, say, coming around, but I made it a one-to-one -one function. So by restricting the domain. Finding the domain and the range using only the formula. That's basically what I'm going to do. So if you have to find the domain of a function and only the formula is given with no restrictions, then you must avoid the following. Be careful if you see this division by zero. So you must avoid that values. The square roots of negative numbers, you must avoid that values also. So these numbers are not in the domain, but all the other numbers are in the domain. The easiest way to determine the range of a function when only the formula is given is to find the inverse of that function and then determine the domain of the inverse, the x values. The domain of the inverse function will then be equal to the range of the original function. Notice, however, that the domain consists of x values and the range consists of y values. So although you swap it, don't write x, write y because you're talking about the rules. But the best is always to show it in an example. So let's look at an example. So find the domain and the range of the following functions. Okay, I give you the, only the equation. So if I only give you the equation, think of the domain. Avoid dividing by zero. It's undefined. So avoid division by zero. So this may not just be equal to zero. So x cannot be negative 3 because then it will be division by zero. So it's all the real numbers except x cannot be equal to 3. That's the domain. So what will be the range? So first find the inverse function. Okay, so I find the inverse function. Basically, I make y, I make x, I make y the subject of the formula, and this. So again, what is the domain? Avoid dividing by zero. So this may not, so x may not be one. So therefore, the range of this is y's element of real numbers, but y might just not be equal to one. Okay, and that's how you say. So find the domain and range of the following functions. Um, I just want to quickly see the domain. Okay, so I basically found the domain. That was easy. But to find the range, let me just recap. I first must find the inverse. And then I find from the inverse the domain. And that will be equal, that will be equal to the range of function. So basically the answer, there's the domain and there is the range. And I got the range by finding the inverse, finding the domain, but that domain is equal to the range of the origin. And that I showed you in the bit. The same in this. Okay, so this is the other exception. You don't get negative square roots. So, so x negative 5 must be Bigger, it must be bigger or equal to zero. So basically that's what I'm, I'm doing there. So x must be bigger and equal to five. That's the domain. So it's all real numbers. X must be bigger and equal to, to five, not negative five, five. So to find the range, first find the inverse of this function. And then you see, oh, but it's open. So there's no restrictions. 
So the range is just an element of it. But practice this a little bit. It's not really so difficult. So the domain, you can just find the range. You must first find the inverse. And then from the inverse, you get the domain. And you know that it's equal to the range of the original. I want you to stop the video. And I want you to do both. Because this is a bit challenging or in the beginning. So I think it will be good if I do both on this video. So find the domain and the range of the following functions. Not, not the inverse, only of the original function. I will just use the inverse to help me. Okay. This is going to be try now 12. Okay, so let's write it down. Number A fx is equal to x, x plus 1. So basically, if I'm going to, so to the domain, let's start with the domain. I must just say x plus 1 must be, uh, not be equal to 0. So therefore, x must not be equal to negative 1. Okay. so. I actually would have liked first to write the domain. First, just do that. And then you say, therefore, the domain is going to be of f or fx. It's going to be x is an element of real numbers, but x may just not be equal to negative 1. All the other numbers, it can be. That's the domain. Now, before I go on, I must first find the inverse of this one. So, it's just, I think the best will be to start with y. Okay, make this a x, make this a y. Then, I cross multiply it, so y is equal to x. Take y over to make it the subject of the, uh, to, to take out a common factor. Take y out as a common factor. Now I write it differently. Okay. It up. I divide 1 minus x. I divide 1 minus x. So therefore, f minus 1 x equals x over 1 minus x. Okay, but now if I look, so I'm going on, so on what color do I write now? So 1 minus x may not be equal to 0. So, uh, okay, I can just say, oh, I'm doing the, so mine, sorry, I know you can do it. So, x may just not be equal to 1. You can see that. Okay. So, you can basically say from this function, from this function, just move it up. So, the, I make it the blue. So, the domain of the blue is going to be x is an element of the real numbers, but x may not be equal to 1. But that domain is equal to this green range. So the domain, okay, so we can end up by saying the range of fx. And now, just that's this is what I mean. Don't make it all x, it's now y, it's a range. So y, and I, I, I rewrite everything and then set. In the place of x, I just put a y. And y might just not be equal to 1. Okay, so that is the domain, and that's the range. This was just to help me to get the range. Okay, it's the next one. Just my okay, let's look at number b. g, x equals 2 
square root x minus 4. So this is actually an interesting one. So you must avoid dividing by 0. And in the root, you must uh, uh, it must be bigger or equal to 0. So be careful. You must think of both. So if you're going to say, you could say x minus 4 for the root, minus 4 must be bigger and equal to 0. But the problem is it cannot be 0. So due to the fact that it's under in the denominator. So you can just say x minus 4 must be bigger than 0. It cannot be 0. So x must be bigger than 4. So therefore, the domain, I'm going to say, oh, let's, let's make it nice, of gx equals, an x is an element of r, but x must be bigger than 4. If it, was, if it was in the numerator, you can have said bigger and equal. Then it can be equal. But because it's in the denominator, this root, it cannot be 0. Okay. So let's just find the inverse function. I just want to move it a little bit down. To help me to find the range. So let's start with y is equal to 2 bracket x minus 4. That's step one, to put a y. Then, don't forget to interchange. So where you see a y, make it a x. And where you see a x, make it a y. Then, I cross multiply. So this is going to be 2, and this is going to be x, y minus 4. Now, I isolate this. I just want to get it out of the denominator there. So I divide x. I divide x. So I have y minus 4 is equal to 2 over x. Now, to get, okay, let's just put that step in, not necessary. But to get that square root away, I square this side and I square this side. So I'm basically, I have 2 over, let's get my pin. Okay, because Remember, if I take a root and I square it, then I'm just ending up with the sub because a root is always a half, and as soon as you square a half, then it just becomes one. Okay. Now I make y the subject. So it's y is equal, now 2 times 2 is 4 over x squared, and I add that 4. Okay. Now this is my new. So, oh, it was, was my function g. So, I have g minus 1 x equals 4 over x squared plus 4. Now, the only thing that this, it may not be 0. Do you agree? So, x squared may not be equal to 0. So, x may not be equal to 0. So, therefore, ending up uh, to say the domain Therefore, the domain of gx, not this one, this is, this is now the domain, not the domain, sorry, 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 I'm just going to correct it, the range, that is the domain of g minus x, but the range of gx is just and make it a y, and it's element of r, but y may not be equal to 0. Okay. So I think I must, you could have said the domain of this one, g minus 1x, and then you will just put x, but now that is just to help me. I'm actually looking for the range of gx, which is equal to the domain of the inverse, and that's how you end.